Hi guys, so I absolutely love Star Wars, especially obviously Darth Vader and his lovely Stormtroopers. So I fancied obviously having a, a kill team of these as well. I love playing kill teams as much as I love watching Star Wars. So the two main teams that I normally go with are the Legionnaires. Um, I just love the gameplay of these dudes and well, I love how I've painted these dudes. And I think these ones look really nice. I do have a couple of different sets of Legionnaires. Um, I think, yeah, I think I've painted about 15 or 16 different kill teams now, but there are several of them that are, well, variations on them sort of selves. And the other ones I like playing are these, the old Custodes. But as you can see, um, yeah, rather than playing normal Custodes, I've got these lovely Ogrins um, that I've had a bit of a, a, bit of a kit bash with. Uh, there are videos, guys, if you want to see how I've done both of these two kill teams, uh, yeah, by all means, uh, well, check out my other videos. So I have, or did have, originally made, already made a Star Wars themed intercessor kill team, um, but I sold them on eBay, uh, and I fancy playing them again. So it was a case of digging out the old Space Marines again. As there was a video, guys, I'm going to go and see the original sort of Darth Vader and Stormtroopers I made. Um, yeah, a video somewhere out there. Uh, but yeah, say so again, I wanted to have a go at making them because, well, I just love the look of Stormtroopers, um, and yeah, the intercessors. If you're new to Kill Team, they are a very good sort of team to play with. There's only six operatives, um, and yet yeah, there's not a lot to remember with what they can do, which is uh, pretty cool as well. But they are quite hardy people. Uh, well, obviously they're Space Marines, so they want to be quite uh, robust. So yeah, as you can see, I've got a variety of bits boxes. Um, I'm trying to organise everything into those little plastic boxes of heads, bodies, and all the rest. Uh, but like anything, it's the time. Uh, yeah, start sitting down doing it, and it's like, nah. So I've got this box which is kind of like part made ones, or ones that I sort of assembled some time ago. Um, there's a few of them I have chopped up, but um, yeah, on the whole they're not too bad. So again, this is where the rule of cool comes in. Me and my mate, we play, um, the weapons don't have to look exactly how they should do. So I want all my uh, stormtroopers to obviously have little pew pew guns. Even though in the gameplay the stats are, I think I'm playing with sort of like rifles, rifle bolt guns, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I didn't want them to be carrying rifles. I want some little pew pew guns just so well It keeps me in the look of more the stormtroopers uh, But hopefully they'll they'll hit better than their, their counterparts on TV Well, I did have a little game of these um, a few days ago and yeah, they won so they're they are quite a good and easy team to sort of play with um, Yeah, they're not too complicated at all, which is pretty cool So yeah bodies. I don't like them when they're running. <laughs> I don't know why for some reason, I like them to be sort of standing nice and squat, nice and still, uh, ready to sort of fire rather than be running. So as you can see, yeah, some of these guys, <laughs> they're both part assembled and just cut up for other, other reasons. Uh, again, apologies, I'm not too sure where all these come from. This dude, I think he's meant to be a sniper, uh, but again, I'm not all too sure what sets these are from. You guys will probably know more than that, um, than me. I say, a lot of these ones I've had for ages. Or I got them when I got the um, started making the Warhammer 40k chess set. So yeah, there's a few uh, few variations here. Um, and obviously the only thing I really want to do with these um, is to sort of cut off the front bit. Yeah, apologies guys, my thumb. I cut it doing something completely different to this. Um, well, I was working on a miniature, um, and yeah, I kind of sliced my finger just a tad. So always be careful. And it's that well, the rule of thumb. Whenever you use a blade, never sort of um, cut towards yourself. Or towards a finger uh, yeah sometimes though we don't always follow our own rules um, and yeah I went towards my finger and bosh a nice little slit in my finger and a bit of my nail anyway enough of that so yeah cleaning up these ones say so these ones are the part assembled um, or some of my have sort of like assembled as well and it's a case of going around and well cleaning them all up um, some of them do have gaps so I'll be filling a little, a little bit of the gaps in with some good old uh, green stuff but uh, yeah, any sort of mould lines and where they're being cut off the sprue lines, they all need obviously, uh, yeah, grinding down, scraping down. So his arm, obviously he's going to be Darth Vader. Again, rule of cool coming in. I think the weapon I actually use with him is a hammer, um, just because it can stun people and, and the like. But obviously, I need, he, he can't walk around with a hammer. This dude needs to walk around with his lightsaber. So it was a case of trying to find an arm that was holding onto a sword, just because I could use the... Uh, the hilt of the sword as the uh, obviously part of the the, uh, the laser thingy what's it uh, yeah brain's gone dead there good old brain fart um, yes yeah, so I say these guys weren't too difficult to put together because say part assembled 
it was just a case of going out and finding all the little pew pew guns. Um, unfortunately though, all the guns I could find were all on the same arm, which is a bit of a shame. I did like to vary it up so they would have had, well, been shooting with different arms. So the good old uh, battery pack, uh, or whatever it's called. I never like these being too high up, as in, I like the look of them, I think they're pretty cool. But um, yeah, I don't like seeing them when I'm looking at the front of the miniature. So whenever I have made these sort of things up, I've always lowered the backpack. Um, just so yeah, it's there, but you can't see it as much from the front. So hey, obviously they're all kind of done, all headless, <laughs> as you can see. Um, yeah, obviously change the arm with, uh, with Darth Vader. I think the, the uh, lightsaber going down didn't quite work. So good old 3D printing time, guys. Right, I know people are going to ask, where did I get these from? Uh, Thingiverse. Go on a Thingiverse, type in Stormtrooper helmet or Darth Vader helmet, and these will pop up. So there's no link down below, guys. It is a case of going on Thingiverse um, and just typing in what you need. Um, say, I love Thingiverse. It's obviously all free. So as you can see there, I had three lots because I wasn't too sure which size would fit perfectly. Um, and there's only like about one mil difference between each one of these. But obviously that's enough to make them look well, well, too small or too big in the heads. Um, and there we go. So the one thing I will say I did do with these heads, I, I downloaded them from Thingiverse and then took them into Tinkercad um, just to put the little ball at the bottom. Um, just so their heads well would sit nicely in the, uh, the sockets. And yeah, just a case of obviously popping all the heads in. Um, yeah, Darth Vader, I cut off the weapon that was there and I got a, um, it's a cotton wool bud. Um, thingy stick, oh, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm still a bit of a cold, guys. It's still in my head, um, and yeah, I am having some big old brain farts. But again, yeah, I love say I love the guns. Uh, definitely pew pew guns. Uh, and obviously, all we need to do now is well get them painted. So usual kind of thing. Everything I do now kind of generally gets painted or primed in black. Um, and then these dudes say I'm I've definitely skipped out the grey dry brushing and just go for the white dry pressure. Um, which obviously works well because these guys are gonna be, well, gonna be white. So rather than trying to paint them in any kind of white uh, and then putting the washes on or any sort of inks on, I've kind of gone the other way. Uh, as you can see, primed in black and then just dry brushed white all over. Um, I actually do go over them, I think about two, three times in the end. Just because when you first go over them, they look really sort of, well, not exactly vibrant, but the white is a definitely a stronger looking white. But then as they sort of dry, they do sort of tone down quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I think I did go over these guys about three times in the end just to sort of build up the whiteness that I liked. And yeah, so even Darth Vader, even though obviously he is going to be black, um, with the primer, so the, the primer I use from the Color Forge is awesome. It really is a true matte black. But obviously that means this dude came out, well, too matte. Um, so yeah, going over dry brushing, uh, and then basically going over and, um, well, using the black wash. Grim black wash here by Speed Paints. So when I put this on, I kind of know that it's going to have, well, darker areas and lighter areas, depending on how much of that white is going to be shown through from underneath. And yeah, again, I'm, I'm really pleased with the results. So painting-wise, obviously these are one of the quickest and easiest uh, paint jobs I've done, uh, because there's not really a lot to them. Yeah, a bit of priming dry brush in white, uh, and then, yeah, other, with the exception of obviously this dude's lightsaber, which is going to be red, there's not really many other sort of colours going on, oh, going on at all in this, which is, uh, say it's fun and quick and easy, I um, absolutely love the results, uh, as I say, obviously Stormtroopers, uh, yeah, I love Stormtroopers, but obviously I love the uh, the original old ones, um, well I say original old ones, obviously because they did the films out of sync, um, yeah, who knows which where these come, well, you guys probably do. As you can see, yeah, not too much, uh, not too much painting at all to do with this dude. It purely is the uh, the little pew pew bolt guns, um, and then obviously any of the black sort of uh, well black costume that he's wearing underneath his armor, bits and pieces. So say I think um, as you see him now, I think I probably did go over his his sort of uh, his panel in again with the dry brush, just to make certain areas, especially the, the big pauldron areas. Um, yeah, definitely a nice lighter white. But um, yeah, really pleased how these came out. Love how they look. Um, I say this, <laughs> this is the sort of second time of making the uh, the Darth Vader Stormtrooper Intercessor Kill Team Squad. Uh, purely because I loved the first one, but then I kind of sold it. Um, and yeah, I wanted to play it again. So yeah, here we are. Uh, take two. 
So something I'm definitely not very good at. Um, again, normally you're not good at things because you don't sort of do that often. And in this case, yeah, trying a bit of the old uh, object source lighting just to sort of get a bit of a reflection on him from his lightsaber. Um, yeah, again, don't follow me on any tips for doing this because I make a bit of a mess of it. I've seen other people do it and they generally sort of put down like a, a white sort of uh, dry brush first and then go over it with the dry brush of the colour that you want to, uh, well, you're illuminating from something else. Um, yeah, I think I've got a bit heavy handed and it didn't come out all that good. So yeah, object source lighting is something I definitely need to really, I don't know, maybe do a video on it. Watch loads of other people and then just try loads of different sort of techniques just to see if any of them work for me. Um, and you guys will be able to see, obviously, well, how I get on. Um, and yeah, take from it what you will. So there we go. There's my intercessor kill team, led by Darth Vader and his lovely merry men, um, yeah, stormtroopers. So say so these guys are nice and easy, uh, and I have got memory like a sieve. I say it all the time, but it's so true. So I have these little cheat sheets uh, that I make up uh, for each team that I play. And literally it has obviously each person or each operative, uh, their abilities, their saves, the damage, and yeah, anything special they can do, which is just awesome. So guys, hope you liked the video. Um, again, I really enjoyed making these again. Um, certainly enjoyed playing them, that's for sure. And they are, say, they are a real good team to play with. So if you're new here, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave some comments down below. Uh, as always, appreciate sort of hearing what you guys think of what I do. Uh, again, more importantly, what you'd like to see me do in the future, really. Let me know if there's any other kind of kill team you want me to kitbash, because I've got a few in mind, and I do like the idea of making them, well, not look how they should really look. So a big thank you and shout out to all my lovely patrons and Chaos Cards and the Colour Forge for helping support the channel, it really does mean so much. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down below, guys. Um, yeah, you get access to a few bits and pieces and get to see what I'm working on, well, before it's here. Okay, guys, you all take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.